All right, just to document what's going on here, I'm having a spot of bother with these dash light uh, receptacle holes here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off and see if I can look at the backside of this uh, board because these contacts are just not making contact. And another thing, I broke this one. Clean in half. And I've got some epoxy setting up right now for that. I could order another one online, but I'm not going to. I'm going to fix that one. So I just removed the speedometer. It actually came out uh, really easily. So I'm going to set that aside. We don't want to mess that up. The dash lights is my problem. The dash lights are my problem, rather. I'm not making contact for some reason. And the light from these little bulbs, uh, I'm assuming, goes up through these. They look like extremely crude fiber optics. <laughs> they're just uh, they're just thick pieces of glass or plastic rather and the light travels through them and goes up front to illuminate your uh, your dash lights. Uh, the search continues. I got to figure out why these things are not working. I think the suspect is on the back side of the speedometer. All right, I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, the inside here, there's no circuit board contacts there on either side. Actually, you can see what's been going on up in here. Look at that. You see that plastic? You see that melted plastic and the discoloration of the circuit board? This one has been getting hot. So here are your two contacts, your plus and your minus here. I don't know which one is which. But apparently I've, I lost contact there. I may just have to squeeze the contacts down a little bit more on my bulb socket. That'll, that may fix the issue. The dash light on the right hand side, uh, I think I know why. So I, I wasn't even able to get it in there and turn it. And the reason why is when you press in a little bit, okay, you move that, right? It's, that's not supposed to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some epoxies. I've got some plastic epoxy. I'm going to put a dab in the corner right there where my finger is to keep that from moving in the future. All right. So it's clear now that the, let's see, this would be... The left-hand side bulb for the dash lights has been getting very hot over the years. And you can see um, this plastic insert right here got so hot that this part of it broke off or melted off or something. I think somebody has been into this instrument cluster before <clears throat> because I did not see that piece of plastic anywhere. It's supposed to look like this, right? This is the one that goes on the other side. It goes over here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Which way does it go? It goes. Um, yeah. It fits in there. It fits in there like that. So anyway, uh, I've got some plastic epoxy tucked away in the corners here. And I'm going to let that sit over probably for several hours at least, I would think, to, uh, to harden up. And then we're going to try to figure out how we can get... Uh, these receptacles to make very good contact with the circuit board on the back so that we don't run into a heat situation anymore. I was trying to upgrade uh, to some LED bulbs, but uh, nothing was working. I'm like, well, okay. And I just had to pull the whole thing back out of the car again because uh, I was ready to button this thing up and call it done, but uh, apparently not. I wanted to dig in here and see if I could determine anything uh, with regards to the flaky temperature gauge. It may come down to simply reinstalling this thing and finding a better gauge somewhere else out of another car or maybe a later model. I'm not sure what I can do, but I've already re removed the screws and I believe this should just sort of just, yep, okay, yeah, that was easy. <laughs> just pop right out of there. Okay, so here we are. Here is the uh, temperature gauge and the fuel and the uh, the oil pressure. Get some white particles of dust. I'm going to try to clean that a little bit. I'm going to see if I can't uh, spruce that up just a little bit before I put this thing back in the car. There's your 13-point connector right there. At number two right there at the top, that is the one that, uh, that, that wire, I believe it's this guy right here. That connects over to the, to the temperature gauge there. I don't know what I'm going to be able to determine from this until, unless I just take this whole thing completely apart. When I tap on the glass of this thing, both the fuel and the temperature gauges 
will joggle up and back. Or they'll uh, they'll move back and forth. I'm not sure why that is. Is the problem inside each of those cans, or is it external? Is there a commonality? Because it, it seems as though if you tap on this thing, both those needles can move around. It would be kind of nice if I could find a commonality. So I'm going to keep on looking and see if I can't find anything. I don't have much confidence though, to be to be honest with you. So let's let's see what we find here. All right, I've got the three uh, nuts and uh, lock washers and washers off of the back here. And each of these gauges plugs into this circuit board with these rather long pins. So I'm taking a screwdriver, inserting underneath each one, and sort of slowly prying this thing up off of the circuit board to see what I can find. All right, we've got the gauge cluster off the circuit board. I see some discoloration there, but I think maybe... I'm trying to figure out if that's, that's probably just flux from the manufacturing process. Although this one seems to be a little darker than the rest. I'm just doing some investigation right now, trying to see what I can see, really. Here's the back side of our gauge cluster, KVM. I wonder what that stands for. Is that the manufacturer? All right, we've got some part numbers on each of these, so... All right, well, I'm going to have to sit this down, do a little inspecting, see if I can't figure out something that... See if I can't determine what's making these things flaky. If it's internal to those cans, then I don't see that there's much I can do about that, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, more of the same here. Uh, what I'm going to do is take some, some uh, 2,000 grit uh, paper, and so I'm going to try to clean up each of the pins here that go to these gauges... Whether or not that will have any impact on this, I really don't know. Just kind of exploring around in the dark, and uh, we'll see what happens. So far, I have cleaned up the posts that plug into these gauges. And this is the temp, and this is the fuel. Both of them are flaky, the temp more so than the fuel. Each one of these gauges seems to be a different part number. This is temp gauge seems is uh, 192.219. The oil pressure is... 057221 fuel gauge is 326197 also i've uh, i had this very small uh, torx driver here and i just used it to cut a very small piece of 600 grit sandpaper and i went down inside each one of these connector holes on these gauges to try to clean them out some that is about all I can do as far as connectivity, electrical connectivity goes. As far as taking each of these gauges off of here and looking inside and trying to figure out if there's something else going on inside each one of them, mm, I'm not sure I want to dig into that. All right, I think I've done about all I'm going to do here. If this doesn't uh, do anything, then the way to fix this will be to simply replace the gauge cluster with something either more modern or from another car. Uh, one thing I have done here is um, I cleaned up these connections here on the uh, circuit board. That's where the studs, these uh, these studs connect in here. I'm not too sure if that's a ground connection or not. I'm thinking that right there, that contact point meets up right there. So I kind of cleaned that up a little bit. Just cleaned up inside each of these uh, contact points here in each gauge. And as well, cleaned up these pins here. So I'm going to go over this once again and then i'll probably start uh reassembling everything oh yeah earlier i mentioned that i had broke one of these bulb receptacles i put some epoxy on it pretty stiff here it's been curing for a couple of hours I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if i can get a bulb in this thing and uh, get this thing back together all right i've uh put the instrument cluster back on the circuit board there were six washers uh there was two on each of these studs on the outside i don't know why i cleaned the contact patches here you know there was copper underneath there was it was gray and then when i sanded it just a little bit i saw copper so that tells me that this uh the shaft here is a ground connection so there were six washers two on each post I put one here and, and and one here to try to improve the uh, connection there. So up next, we're going to continue uh, reassembling our instrument cluster. All right, here's another little thing you can do. Anytime you find a metal st ground strap on anything you work on, go ahead and sand down the contact points. Expose good metal. Stuff corrodes over time. Just uh, 
a little bit of good maintenance there. All right, we've got our instrument cluster back together for the second time. Let's get it back in the car and see if all of our lights are working. And a little later on, we're going to take this thing on a test drive. We're going to keep our fingers crossed to see what happened with our temperature gauge. To be honest with you, I'm not confident. I think the problem is internal to that, to that can, to the very internal core of the temperature gauge. There is some commonality to it because both the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge were doing the same thing. And if you tap on the dash or tap on this glass, they would both judder around. That tells me there's a common connection between the two and, you know, possibly just a bad connection. And I tried to clean all the connections I could. I'm trying to think positively here, folks. So, hey, keep your fingers crossed for the test drive, all right? We'll see you in a little bit. All right, test drive. Wish me luck. Hey, look at that. The glow plug light decided to work this time. It shuts off too early though. They work though. Let's go. All right, we're out and about. Been in the car for a couple of minutes here. I don't know, about five minutes. And we're right at the, uh, the 40 degree centigrade mark. And our instrument cluster is, I must say, it's attractive. It's nice and clean, but only one half is illuminated. This side over here has got a problem. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it's got a problem. The circuit board in the back, I, I had it apart again, did a bunch of uh, impedance testing, and the circuit for this, for the left-hand side uh, instrument light, the positive lead to that, the positive lead has got a break somewhere in the circuit board, I think. All right, we just filled up with uh, diesel fuel. And uh, we're on a little test drive before I head over to the gym and do really bad things to the treadmill. And it looks like we're just above 60 on our gauge. I'm not really seeing any fluctuations in the gauge. Uh, but then again, you know, I they don't normally start to occur until it gets up past 80, so... We're just gonna see what happens here. All right, we found a uh, quiet back road here. And we've made it up to 80, maybe uh, just a share past 80 right there. So we're just gonna continue our little cruise and continue to monitor the situation. All right, several more minutes here. We've been on our little trip. It looks like it's about 85 maybe 86 or 87, somewhere in that neighborhood. The speed limit on this road is like 50, so I can't go too fast. I'm gonna get out here and get on the main uh, interstate here sh just shortly. One thing I am noticing, I'm not seeing the fluttering, I'm not seeing the fluctuations, and when I tap on the glass, I'm not seeing, uh, I'm not seeing the needle bouncing up and down like I was. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say that I believe we have fixed our engine coolant temperature problem. We're not seeing any shaking up and down of the needle any longer. The temperature is reading around 85 degrees centigrade, so that's I think that I think that's about 185 Fahrenheit, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's not quite 190 Fahrenheit, but it's rock solid. It's it's right there, man. It's this not going anywhere. It's it's accurate. I believe it is accurate. So what did we learn? I would say that the ground connection on the back of the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge was the problem. There are two pins that go from the circuit board into the gauges. Now I cleaned off those two pins. Also there are three main threaded studs that hold the whole gauge cluster to the circuit board. I did a lot of cleaning in that area as well. I, of course, you saw it earlier in the video. 
personally, I think this was a grounding issue. There's only one thing left that kind of irks me, and that is the left-hand side instrument light does not work, and I think it's a problem in the circuit board. And, well, right now, I'm not going to worry about it. I got bigger fish to fry, but by golly, I've got high beams. Look at that. I'm digging that. All right. I appreciate everyone stopping by my channel. For more cool videos on a Mercedes W126, stop back soon. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.